this was kind of unusual situation. And I could still hear the woman screaming on the inside of the truck. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 times serial killers were caught in the act. The male victims allegedly killed by a 31-year-old man, Jeffrey Dahmer. For this list, we're looking at notorious murderers who were apprehended while somewhere in the process of claiming the life of their next victim. Did we miss any other fortuitous serial killer arrests? Let us know in the comments. Randy Kraft. Randy Kraft, one of the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history. He's suspected in nearly 70 murders, most of them in California. Referred to as the scorecard killer, Randy Kraft was known for keeping a journal in which he ostensibly wrote the names of all his victims. He began a killing spree in 1971 and is believed to have claimed the lives of up to 67 young men. After more than a decade since his first murder, Kraft was arrested at a traffic stop when two patrol officers pulled him over for drunk driving. California Highway Patrol pulled over Randy Kraft for driving erratically. In the passenger seat of his Toyota Celica, they found a dying Marine, his last victim. In his car, the officers found an apparently intoxicated young man who had been strangled to death. They also found his murder journal in the trunk, with which they connected Kraft to the other killings. A notebook with handwritten cryptic notes on as many as 67 victims dating back to the 1970s. He was convicted on 16 counts of murder and handed a death penalty sentence in 1989. Harvey Glattman. After showing signs of sadomasochism as a child, Harvey Glattman was taken to see a medical professional who assured his parents he would grow out of the behavior. But as he grew older, it was obvious that Glattman's strange fascination with morbidity only worsened. While in prison for kidnapping and assaulting a woman, he was diagnosed with psychopathic personality of a schizophrenic type. Once out of prison, Glattman's crimes began to escalate. In 1957, 29-year-old Harvey Glattman moves to L.A. He was responsible for assaulting and killing three women, taking pictures of them before ending their lives. As long as he has a camera in his hands, sexy women ask no questions. His day of reckoning came in 1958 when he tried kidnapping his intended fourth victim. He was spotted by a patrolman who swiftly arrested him, putting an end to his crimes. When the officer searches Harvey's car, he soon realizes who the attacker is. Dayton Leroy Rogers. Dayton Leroy Rogers, dubbed the Malala Forest Killer, had carved his name out as one of the world's most evil killers. Dayton Leroy Rogers was known in the media as the Malala Forest Murderer because he dumped the bodies of his victims in the woods around Malala, Oregon. On August 7, 1987, Rogers picked up Jennifer Lisa Smith and stabbed her in his car. Smith fell onto the road, and her screams grabbed the attention of patrons in a nearby restaurant who rushed to her aid. Rogers quickly drove off, but he was chased by another man who noted his plate number and address and handed them over to the police. Oregon's Supreme Court has overturned his death sentence three times now. This new trial is expected to last roughly three weeks. The notorious Oregon killer was arrested based on this information and currently sits on death row for the murder of Smith and six other women. I absolutely agree that I have forfeited my place in free society and that I forever belong behind bars till I die. Edward Surratt. While working as a truck driver, Edward Surratt passed through parts of Ohio and Pennsylvania at a time when certain cities were grappling with a string of unsolved murders. Even though he was arrested, a lack of evidence prevented the police from charging him with any of those crimes. He would pick a house one story so that no one could be up in the second floor and come down and surprise him. On July 1st, 1978, however, Surratt would provide police with all the evidence they needed when he broke into a house and held a family of three hostage. The father was able to escape to find help and brought police back to the house where Surratt was passed out drunk. The suspect attempts to escape but is ultimately apprehended. He refuses to tell police his name and is held without bond. A day later, Florida authorities identified the man as Edward Arthur Surratt. He was arrested on the scene and linked to a murder in South Carolina, receiving two life sentences for each crime. He didn't talk a whole lot, really. He didn't say, look, if you give me this, I'll, I'll tell you that. And I kept asking him questions. 
And while we were there, he wasn't really paying a lot of attention to us. William Bonin. William Bonin gained notoriety as the freeway killer for dumping the bodies of most of his victims along various Southern California freeways. Although convicted of 14 murders and executed by lethal injection, Bonin is suspected to have claimed the lives of up to 36 male victims. His arrest probably wouldn't have happened if he wasn't already being surveilled by the police. On the 2nd of June, whilst the LAPD began to organize a 24-hour surveillance operation on William Bonin, their new prime suspect for the freeway killer, Bonin and James Monroe had picked up another young man. On June 11, 1980, officers tailed Bonin when they spotted him picking up a teenager. After hearing disturbing sounds coming from his van, police gained access into it and found Bonin in the process of assaulting the teen. With a mountain of evidence obtained from the vehicle, Bonin later confessed to a total of 21 murders. He would give them information about his numerous victims on the understanding that his confessions could not be used as evidence against him. Carl Eugene Watts. Carl Eugene Watts, admitted murderer of 13 women, could soon see the light of day. Carl Eugene Watts was an American serial killer who managed to evade detection for almost eight years. Watt's methods were unlike those of most of his counterparts. He committed his crimes across different states and never left conclusive DNA behind. With a possible victim count of more than 100, Watt's reign of terror came to an end on May 23, 1982. That day, he broke into the apartment of Lori Lister and Melinda Aguilar in Houston and attempted to choke both women to death. I knew that he was there to, you know, to hurt or kill. Aguilar pretended to pass out, then successfully escaped from the apartment to call for help. Watts had fled from the scene, but he was later caught by the authorities and linked to his other crimes. I'm directing my prosecutors to swear out a warrant this afternoon charging Coral Eugene Watts with premeditated first-degree murder for the brutal killing of Helen May Dutcher. Robert Rhodes. As a long-haul truck driver, Robert Rhodes's job put him in constant contact with hitchhikers and truck stop sex workers, whom he frequently targeted. On the day he was caught, Rhodes had picked up a woman named Kathleen Vine and handcuffed her in his truck. A highway patrol officer came upon the truck parked on the side of the road with its hazard lights on and discovered the woman inside screaming for help. Rhodes was quickly arrested and charged with the assault and unlawful imprisonment of Vine. He was later linked to other murders across multiple states and is currently serving life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The FBI began to build a kidnapping and murder case against Robert Ben Rhodes. They revisited the evidence from the search of Rhodes's apartment and found more photos of Regina. Adam Leroy Lane. The man that had broken into our house was a long haul trucker. His name was Adam Leroy Lane lived in North Carolina and was running routes up and down from North Carolina up to Nashua, New Hampshire. Adam Leroy Lane earned the nickname the Highway Killer as he committed his crimes just by the highway while working as a truck driver. After fatally stabbing two women and nearly killing another, Lane's final crime came on July 30th, 2007, when he broke into a house in Massachusetts. He attacked the family's daughter while she slept and her muffled screams were loud enough to wake her parents up in their room. She said, I'll check on her. And I said, no, I'll check on her, which really isn't the norm. Usually I'm selfish and want to get all the sleep I need. And, um, but that, that morning, something told me to get up. I got up and my wife Jeannie followed me in there. The couple then wrestled with Lane and were able to overpower him, even though they sustained a few knife cuts in the process. Lane was arrested by police and subsequently connected to his previous crimes through DNA. Monica lit up every room and every part. He should get down on his knees every day and pray that God has more mercy on his soul than he showed Monica. Robert Black. This Scottish serial killer unleashed terror in the United Kingdom, abducting and killing girls whose bodies usually turned up days later. He evaded capture for over a decade, and in doing so, helped to destroy the meaning of childhood for an entire generation of children. After claiming the lives of four girls, multiple police units across the UK mounted an exhaustive nationwide manhunt for Black. But his arrest was only made possible due to the keen observation of one David Herkus. Herkus was mowing his lawn when he observed his neighbor's daughter being kidnapped by Black. 
the police were called to the scene, and they stopped Black's van and arrested him on the spot. Police forces around the country began to pool their resources. Before long, he became the prime suspect in a series of unsolved child murders that had spanned over a decade. In a chilling turn, the abducted girl was the daughter of one of the responding officers. We have the relief of knowing that the perpetrator of this gruesome, horrible crime has been brought to justice. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Jeffrey Dahmer. On the night of July 22, 1991, a terrified man who had been handcuffed on one wrist flagged down a police car in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's like I told the policeman that this freak, this crazy guy, was trying to hurt me. The man, Tracy Edwards, then led the officers back to the house of the person who had put him in the handcuffs, a man named Jeffrey Dahmer. Earlier that evening, Dahmer, who at that point had already killed 17 people, lured Edwards back to his apartment under the guise of a photo shoot. Once it became clear that Dahmer wanted to kill him, Edwards found a window of opportunity and escaped. I hit him and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. And what happened? Then I made it outside. Upon searching his apartment, police found overwhelming evidence of Dahmer's crimes, and he was immediately placed under arrest. Authorities also took out a barrel of what they think is acid. Police are reluctant to reveal exactly how many victims there might be, but knowledgeable investigators say it could be more than a half a dozen. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.